When you think of modern day Germany, a few things come to mind. Luxury vehicles, amazing engineering, and of course, beer. Lots and lots of beer. Which could explain how their plans for the new airport in Berlin went so horribly wrong. Because you see, it was supposed to open in 2011, but as of this video's recording in summer 2020, it has never served a single flight. How did this come about? To get a sense of how this screwed up situation came to be, we have to go way back to another screwed up time, the days of Nazi Germany. Berlin's only major airport at the time was Tempelhof Airport. This was all fine and dandy, but the Second World War ended and the Cold War divided the city into two, and eventually Tempelhof found itself on the western side of the divided city. This led to the rise of Schinefeld Airport, which opened to the public in 1962. Built by the Soviets, it was an example of classical Soviet architecture that is, unwelcoming and cold. But it served its purpose, serving at least a million passengers per year, mostly to Eastern Europe and fellow Soviet satellite states. And then there's Tego Airport, which was built in just 90 days in the former West Berlin to handle the additional flights from the Berlin Airlift in 1948. All three airports served both West and East Berlin until the reunification of Germany, with Tempelhof finally closing in 2008, leaving Schinefeld and Tego as the only remaining airports for Berlin. But as time passes, cities grow and things get old. Before we knew it, both airports outlived their useful capacity, and a new one needed to be built. In the mid-2000s, construction started on a brand new, state-of-the-art airport. Located next to Schinefeld Airport, it was meant to replace both of the old airports to be the most modern one in Europe, ushering in the new golden age for Germany. Instead, it became one of the biggest running jokes in the world. It started with the price tag, which was originally around 3 billion euros, as it was being built, it became clear that they drastically underestimated that number. Today, it is estimated to be actually 7 billion euros. Nevertheless, the airport's construction went ahead. While it had more construction missteps and budget calculation errors than most projects, it seemed to be going fine and ready to open in 2011. Everyone was getting ready for the big move. Airplanes were getting ready to be transported, airlines were packing up, VIPs such as Chancellor Angela Merkel were making plans to attend the grand opening. And then it all fell apart. Just weeks before it was slated to open, it was postponed. Because you see, the airport was not only utterly unusable, but it could also kill human beings. It all started when the fire inspectors went in to certify the building. They released smoke to simulate a fire. Most fire alarms went off. Some did not. Some went off but on the other side of the building. The smoke dampers kicked in and the smoke was exhausted downwards under the airport's floors where you could find the faulty wiring that caused the alarms to malfunction. Both of these were major issues because smoke rises and the wiring under the floor was next to high voltage power lines and heating cables, which were fire hazards in themselves. And on top of that, the system that was meant to suck out smoke and replace it with fresh air did not work. The fire inspectors determined that in the event of an actual fire, the building would likely go up in flames within minutes. Lastly, the ceiling was found to be too heavy, which made it vulnerable to collapse. On the less deadly side, it was later found that the airport didn't have enough check-in counters or luggage belts to handle the influx of passengers, the 1,200 automatic doors also did not open, the cooling system did not work, and some of the escalators were too short. The airport's anticipated opening was postponed by a year, then it was postponed again, and again, and again, and again. The airport's fire system was utterly unfixable. 
Not only that, but the faulty wiring led to other problems, such as the replacement of all departure board screens because they were unable to be turned off and burned out over time, costing another 500,000 euros. This is on top of simply maintaining the empty airport, which costs around 16 million euros a month. All these developments alarmed the estate of the late Willy Brandt, which the airport was set to be named after. They even went as far as considering revoking the airport's permission to use his name, fearing that being associated with such a fiasco would tarnish his legacy. Finally, at the end of 2019, there was light at the end of the tunnel. It appeared that the issues plaguing the airport for almost a decade had been resolved, getting the green light to open. In 2020, right in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, the biggest global crisis for air travel in history. If you found this video interesting, please hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe for more nerd facts. You can also support us on Patreon where you can help us make more videos just like these.